welcome to Fuzz and Giants podcast, the podcast that talks about Doctor and Star Wars, hosted by Lee Credit. Welcome and hope you enjoy listening to this episode. Welcome back to Fuzz and Giants. The Doctor and Star Wars podcast is back to entertain you. I am Lee, and it's been a while, but I am back. I have been in my Agatha all along Eva and Miss Catherine Hunt as Agatha Harkness. Loved her story in it. I recommend watch Nisha as Brain. Stay tuned at the end because I have an announcement regarding Agatha all along. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Now, I did say last episode I was going to do the record, but things haven't worked well in recording and script stage, so I'm hoping to get it done in the next few episodes. But it's on its way and it's going to be a good one. So I am returning to Doctor Who in this episode and I'm looking back to an era that I love. This series, of course, was very controversial and yes, it's series 12. Starring the comedian, the legend, the history maker, Jodie Whittaker. Also, we saw Sasha Darwin break brothers to become the first Asian master and this follows the series of first so what did I think of this series? I think it went in the right direction. Chris did have a few hiccups. Yeah, it wasn't perfect. I do think it could have been a little bit better. I do love this series, by the way. However, it has a situation issue that Series 1 has. But I'll keep that for another episode. Because I have a lot to turn up and I don't know if it is a fixable issue or it's just an issue Doctor will have to deal with. Let's focus on the comedian, aka Jodie Whittaker, aka the Whittaker Nator. Jodie's doctor went in the right direction after they went further into her darkness situation, which I love. Her anger learning about what happened to Gallifrey is so, so heartbreaking for her. What is your problem, Master? Love her in the tuxedo because it looks good on her. I'm still in it nowadays. I just would have seen her in it more. I like the fact that she does have a lot of strong moments. Uh, one of them is when she talks to Nikola Tesla about being out of place, which I can relate to. I often feel out of place. So this is a scene where I actually feel that this is me. And that's why the scene to be stands out personally. I'm a huge fan of Manic Gill. As you know, I love the character of Yasmin Khan. I still mention there's a lot. Her mental health are his important. And it makes me feel that she, like her competitors, they've had struggles. And looking back now, it makes her story like more endearing and more impactful. And I like the fact that she, like Ruby Sunday, stands out for that particular arc that they've been chosen to have done. I love Yaz starting to be more doctorly as it comes across well with her actions, especially in Praxis and the Times Children, where... She makes brass decisions and she does it without getting hurt. I love her admiration and love for the Doctor. It's beautiful as it starts to elevate to the revelation in Eva that when she leaves she's in love with the Doctor because one episode is so important. So there is that moment in The Haunting of the Diyati where she says her person's a little bit different. It just starts to make a lot of sense. And then it goes up from there. I do feel even though they were given the development, Bradley Walsh and Thompson Cole were great. I loved them, but I felt Chris should have done more with the boys because this is a testament to what other shows are doing. Mandalorian Series 3, just like this era, is not well received, but it might should do what Chris fails to do with Ryan and Grimm. And that's his biggest weakness when he has two many companions. I like both of them. I love both of the boys. Graham has the appeal of a British gentleman and I feel Ryan is the Doctor's closest confidant, so that's good. Fish it off, I like the way that the companions are there for the Doctor at the end of the future of the gym. It is a moment that I remember for the right reasons as the Doctor needed that pep talk. I would have loved more of that in the series because it elevated stuff. Sasha Darwin and Joe Martin. Let's talk about these guys. They're great. They were brilliant. 
it doesn't matter who was first in being the first black doctor but for me Joe and Shuri Getwell will both share it in my heart as they both deserve it and I feel they both are very talented. Sasha as I said earlier was breaking barriers for Amanda and also now with Radha Sefu who will be in the show next year as Belinda Chandra I do feel them more stronger in their later appearances as I felt they were still showing their potential in series 2. John Barron returned briefly and even though he's only used for a plot point like with Revolution of the Darts, Jack kind of is nearly forgettable, which is a bit of a disservice. John did a good job. Chris made a few mishaps, which is unfortunate. The Eiffel Tower incident, I get the Doctor trying to hold the Master back. It was too far in the end. I loved the episode. Also, the divisive moment in Can you Hear Me. Now, I should relate to it as I am like 13. How, however, three years later, Tech, Jennifer Corbett and Bradford in the Bad Batch episode The Crossing, which is one of my favourite episodes, kind of show what they should have done. There was a scene in particular from the episode that meant more to me than this line. The line from the episode in question is... Heckle chose a different path as did Cresta. I have to respect their decision. Even though it can be difficult to understand, we must carry on. I may process moments and thoughts differently, but it does not mean that I feel any less than you. It's more fitting than can you hear me what's trying to do. What is worse, Russell D. Davis a year later would produce a set scene where he does just the same thing. I love you, Rima Chris Chibber, but this is not the way. What does Lee have to say about the man draw? I mean, Thomas Chow. They're the same thing. A cutie foundling. Cutie foundlings are here, and they're here to stay. I loved it. As the usual Lee fashion, I'm trying to work. The episode didn't deliver, but I will get to that later, because this does get better going forward, so it's just an off episode. The Times Children, okay, I get things, however, this is a headache, an embarrassment, I may be associated saying that with Russell T. Davis 1. Two questions, why is Mando 2 and Grogu's Rescue by Cameron Beck in that beautiful flashback from last year better than the Times Children flashback? Jonesy deserves way better than the test the episode gave us. She was robbed. When I look at Grogu's reaction to the clangs of the forge, his face was terrified, similar in the flashback. Both fans deserve therapy. This was disappointing, especially because it was the end of the season, and even though that series has been strong and risk, however, on the arc, it doesn't matter, as it does its job, and it gets better no matter if it's Chris or Russell it deserves. It is so good. I want to thank the children playing the time as children because you guys were good. You did a great job. Love the representation and the lots of being different from the beginning. So I'm happy and thank you. Now it's time to talk about the baddest, the meanest and the idiot well loved by myself, Tekton. If you haven't seen me bash Tekton in Tekton vs. Jinjan, I'll put the link in the description down below as a really interesting episode and do a bit of comparisons as well. I love the character work with Tipton. She reminds me of Royce Hemlock from The Bad Batch. I am mad and angry about Tipton, which is kind of similar to my opinions with Roycey Boy. What Tipton did was wrong, and they are a foolish character. Huge shout out to Sam Baxter and Jake Nwogu for doing a good job, and they didn't even speak, they just gave a mask of acting without speaking. Thank you. I think this era not only continued consistent historic episodes like I saw from series 11, I started to see good historical episodes, genius Nikola Tesla, the idiotic Odd- Odd- Lord Baron, the talented Ada Lovelace, realistic Noah Inyak Khan, and more. Each of things, friends, like I said earlier, had a real life uh, issue, so it's something that people get in real life. Most of it was excluded well apart from the incident where I said earlier, I think there's work to do in Doctor Who, but at least the show is going for it. I want to explain something. I think having people stood together was maybe a bit of a weakness. I get what fans say it's more of collective. I feel it feels odd and it can be a bit of, of a strange thing, so that's a bit of a setback. 
I feel there were six hits and four average episodes. That's not bad in my eyes because the lowest score was an eight, which seems to be the lowest average score in recent years. And I believe the weak episodes have some merit and that's why some of the low scores are still as good as maybe a big episode. Final thoughts, I may be harsh, but I still love this era. I'm grateful for what Georgie brought and she has some great iconic episodes in this series, especially from Chris, Maxine Elton and Pete Mattie. Singing like another did a brilliant job with his music once again with a new type of theme, a Doctor Who bomb theme and a new version of the Doctor Who theme tune. I love that we have three female writers with them, with Nina Mativia, Charlene James and Maxine Elton. It was brilliant to see and um, hear more from female writers because I do think Doctor Who needs to bring more female writers going forward in the years to come. Time for the announcement. I will be talking about Agatha all along on the podcast. I love the show and I want to appreciate more on the podcast. So if you love Agatha all along, stay tuned. I'm hoping to do these episodes of Mesos Justice. That's it for my talk on Series 12. What did you think of Series 12? Comment down below or at Agatha22 on social media. Let me know your thoughts. And please be kind in the comment section. Please subscribe to Fast and Gentlemen because there's some great episodes coming up and I love the support you give and I want you to keep giving the podcast some love. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye everyone. Thank you for listening to Fasman and Jarens. Please get in touch at Fasman22 on social media. If you love anything I do, please subscribe to the First One Challenge YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Subscribe to First One Challenge.